Good morning on a special edition of SUTV News, the Capitol under attack as protesters storm the Capitol building Wednesday while Congress meets to certify the results of the election. That and more, our coverage begins right now. Good morning and welcome to a special edition of SUTV News. I'm Jacob Hitz. A lot has happened in the last 48 hours, so let's get right into it. We begin in Washington, where Congress met to certify the results of the 2020 election from back in November. SUTV's Bailey Casada has more. After being interrupted by the protests in Washington, D.C., the confirmation of the presidential election resumed late Wednesday night. Earlier Wednesday, Congress, led by Vice President Mike Pence and Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, met at the Capitol to formally confirm President-elect Joe Biden's victory for the 46th President of the United States. Arizona Republican Paul Gosar took the stand to formally object the electoral results from his home state. Mr. Vice President, I, Paul Gosar from Arizona. For what purpose Fort, does the gentleman from Arizona rise? I rise up for myself and 60 of my colleagues to object to the uh, counting of the electoral ballots from Arizona. Uh, is the objection in writing and signed by a senator? Yes, it is. Texas Senator Ted Cruz joined Gosar in objection of the results, sending both the House and the Senate back to their chambers to deliberate. Meanwhile, protesters drew closer to the Capitol, eventually breaking in and sending Congress members scrambling for safety. By 8 p.m. Eastern, the Senate was back in session, with Democrat and Republican senators voicing their displeasure with the events that took place that day. For SUTV News, I'm Bailey Casada. Around 3.30 this morning, Congress officially certified the results, officially making Joe Biden president-elect, prompting a response from President Trump. While his Twitter is suspended, he did release a statement through an aide stating that, quote, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th, end quote. Meanwhile, yesterday, riots broke out at the steps of the Capitol building before breaching the building, sending congressmen and women scrambling for cover. SUTV's Tyler Danceson has more. <laughs> While Congress gathered to count the votes from the 2020 election, President Trump held a Save America rally where he proclaimed that he was still the winner of the 2020 election. We will never give up. We will never concede. It doesn't happen. You don't concede when there's theft involved. President Trump then spoke about the election certification process that was taking place just a few blocks away and had this message to everyone who was there. We're going to walk down to the Capitol and we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women and we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Moments after, chaos broke loose. D.C. police attempted to keep protesters from breaking into the building, but they were no match for the thousands of protesters swarming the building. Senators and representatives were evacuated and quickly moved into lockdown. A standoff inside the Senate chamber had taken place as well between police and protesters. One woman was shot, still unclear as to why or by who. Tragically, she passed away in the hospital just past 5 p.m. Wednesday night. D.C. police had also found an explosive device at the RNC headquarters, also located in Washington. The DNC building was also evacuated due to a suspicious package being delivered on Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon, President-elect Joe Biden was set to talk about his policies once in office, but instead had a different message for the president. I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution and demand an end to this siege. Afterwards, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser went on to set a 6 p.m. curfew time to try and ease the tensions. The National Guard was deployed later in the day and managed to get the situation back under control and managed to move protesters away from the Capitol site. Capitol Police announced at 7 p.m. Eastern Time that the Capitol building was cleared, more than four hours after the building was breached. Even with the presence of the National Guard and the curfew set in place, protesters remained near Capitol Hill as of 7.30 Wednesday night. From SUTV News, I'm Tyler Danceson. 
As of Thursday morning, four people have died from the riots. One woman was shot by Capitol Police inside the Capitol, while three others died in medical emergencies. More than 50 people were arrested following the riots, including 26 on Capitol grounds. Numerous White House staff have resigned in the wake of the riots. Chief of Staff to the First Lady Stephanie Grisham was the first to resign on Wednesday, followed by Deputy White House Press Secretary Sarah Matthews. On Thursday morning, Mick Mulvaney announced he was also leaving the Trump White House after serving as his Chief of Staff from February 2017 until March of last year, before becoming a special envoy to Northern Ireland. We move on now to the runoff elections in Georgia that have determined the control of the Senate. Incumbent Republicans David Perdue and Kelly Leffler both failed to win re-election outright as both candidates failed to reach 50% of the vote. As a result, runoff elections were scheduled for these two seats. Perdue and John Ossoff would face off head-to-head, -head, as well as Leffler and Raphael Warnock. All four candidates campaigned vigorously in getting national attention from Vice President Mike Pence and President-elect Joe Biden. After counting the votes across the state, Raphael Warnock was declared the winner around 2 a.m. Wednesday, becoming just the fourth black senator from the South ever. Later Wednesday, John Ossoff was declared the winner in the other Senate race, becoming the youngest senator since Joe Biden won back in 1973. Overall, this is the first time two Democratic senators are representing the state of Georgia since 2002. And on the larger scale, this is the first time that Democrats hold all three chambers of the government, the House, the Senate, and the White House, since 2009, in the 111th Congress. That's our broadcast for this morning. Special thanks to everybody at SUTV who worked very hard to put this together in a short amount of time. From all of us at SUTV News, I'm Jacob Itz. Thanks and have a good day.